All right, my name is Angie Ireri, and I'm the founder of Simply Organized. Mm -hmm. It's a professional organizing business, and what I do is I help people declutter uh, various rooms in their home, um, and then help them organize and come up with, with a system to remain organized, so they don't go back to the state of clutter that they found themselves in. Um, I started in 2015, and sort of been doing it off and on since then. But the last couple of years, I pursued it um, with 100% of my being. Okay. Yes. What, well, what inspired you to start this? Um, you know, I've always just been the tidy person at home, mm -hmm. um, the admin person, mm -hmm. looking after our parents' documents and all that sort of stuff with the chalmers that I was in as the one who was doing the minutes and mm -hmm. all of that. And when I started thinking about, um, okay, I'm tired of the corporate life, I want something different, I want to slow down, I just came across professional organizing, but in the US and in Europe, and I thought, oh, okay, this is something I could do. Mm. Um, that's what inspired me. I was a little apprehensive, not sure it would catch on in, in this market because we all have house managers and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but it has, by word of mouth and um, through social media, I've, um, the business has kept going. Okay. All right. Okay, so that we can start with the... Okay, so from your article, which was very interesting and uh, gotten a lot of feedback from, from it. Um, so as a professional organizer, how do you approach the idea of like repurposing items when helping clients declutter? Okay, um, you know, first in the declutter process, you put things into categories, the things I feel um, you need to get rid of, the things I feel that actually maybe you can make use of this elsewhere in the home. And then of course there are things that people just want to hold on to. Mm. And um, with some of those things, I'm like, you know, why is it hidden in a cupboard or in a drawer? Why don't you bring it out? And then find a use for it um, so that you can see it, remember who gave it to you, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is a conversation with the client and just seeing what, what they really want, what they want to hold on to and how we can display it rather than just have it hidden away. Okay. Um, and there's an article I was reading as well about people who like holding on to stuff, like hoarding. Um, how do you deal with people who like to hoard? Like they really don't want to let go. And some, some as I'm sure maybe in your decluttering process, there are some things maybe you feel they should be thrown away instead of reusing them. How, how do you deal with people who like to, to hoard? Um, okay, I'll be honest, I don't think I've come across real hoarders. Mm -hmm. Um, if you look at some of the TV shows in the US and, and the Europe, you'll mm -hmm. see real, real hoarding. I think what has happened with my clients is that they've just gotten too busy to mm -hmm. sort their things out. Mm -hmm. And then we live in homes where we have space. So you mm -hmm. find you'll put it away and you'll think, ah, one day I'll get to it, one day I'll get to it. But indeed, there are times when we have to sit and have a serious conversation about how um, you really don't need this anymore. Is it serving you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe there's somebody else in your family who might who might need it, or you may bless a children's home. So a lot of it is just having a conversation with them about and giving them options of what to do, of what to do with mm -hmm. the items. And more often than not, they're agreeable. Some will still hold on, and you you let them. You okay. know, it may mean something to them, so yeah. you you allow them. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Um, so in the article you mentioned about like repurposing containers for various uses, um, can you like give me examples of how practical and you know fancy containers can be repurposed? <laughs> okay. You know the the article the inspiration of this article came yeah. from this lady who was um, organizing decor for for a function okay. and you know teapots these days we hardly use teapots mm. 
a lot of people use flasks. Yeah, yeah. But we still have, I mean, if you look at your parents' stuff, you'll find they have lovely teapots. Yeah. And using that as a vase mm -hmm. um, is just exceptional. Um, things like um, nice, even uh, plastic containers, mm -hmm. um, using them to hold all sorts of things. You know your kids will have little Lego, mm -hmm. they will have little little items that they don't want to let go of or, or that are part of a toy. The best thing is to keep them all together. So keep them in those, old, I mean, how many times do we um, have takeout food? and have oh, the yeah, yeah a lot mm. so use those okay. um the mugs um you get mugs for anniversaries mm. for mother's day and okay yes i drink out of mine but some of them i have my makeup brushes in some of them i have on my desk as pen holders so mm. i'm seeing my little girls my girls when they were little yeah constantly <laughs> on on my desk yeah. you know um, so it's it's things like that vases. Um, some vases are really pretty. It's not. Don't keep them in your store. Keep them out, even if they don't have flowers. Mm -hmm. Just have them out. They're just you know. So it's just the things that you have at home. Just doing more with them and being able to see them rather than storing them far away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Um, so are there, are there, can you give us some practical tips for, okay, I think you've really discussed that, like effective decluttering um, in, in something that will make uh, sense to a busy parent or someone who has a big house and they're not, maybe their house, or they would want to train their house managers to do, you know, um, they have excess stuff, you find guys store a lot of stuff maybe even in the garage like mm. this board mm. like what are the practical like effective tips like you can use to just okay mm. when it comes to decluttering first um you need to you need to be in the right frame of mind mm. as in today i've decided i'm going to tackle this drawer this cupboard and do it a space at a time um set aside the time and decide okay today i'll give it one or two hours and have um, little boxes or bags for things you're going to throw away, things that you'll look at and decide, oh, I'm not sure. So you keep it mm -hmm. separately and the ones that you're going to keep. Um, it's very important not to, at least for me, empty everything out like onto the floor or onto your bed or onto a table. Mm -hmm. um, just decide to do a bit at a time mm -hmm. because after two hours, you're tired. If you've emptied everything out, you're going to look at this mess and be overwhelmed and you'll never go back to it. True. But if you're just doing a drawer at a time or a box at a time, mm -hmm. that way you can pace yourself. Um, you know, you can even put a timer and say after two hours, that's it. I'm just giving myself two hours so that you don't get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, then you can decide every week one day an hour a day this is what i'll mm. do and then once you decide to give away something give it away straight away <laughs> put it in a box yeah. and decide put it away not in storage in yeah. your car yeah. or and it always helps if you know where you're going to give your stuff away to mm. so that it goes straight away okay um the items that you've decided you're a bit undecided about Okay, hold on to them, but in two, three months, if you've not taken them out of that bag, let them, give, let them go. You, you don't need them, okay? Yeah. Um, and then with the things you've decided to keep, it's important to find a home for everything. So whether it's going back in that drawer or whether it's going instead on a shelf, do that mm. so that when you use it, when you're done with it, it has somewhere to go. Because yeah. if it doesn't, it just gets left on the table and that's how you then build up the, mm. the clutter again. Then I always say take a picture before and after so that, you know, you'll see, hey, I've made progress and you'll be motivated to do it again, you know, the following the following week. Yeah. Um, important, bend properly so that you don't hurt yourself. Okay. Um, 
stay hydrated, play some music, try and make it fun, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes call a friend to to, mm. to help you do it because, you know, especially if you're going through sentimental stuff, you know, you can get stuck. Oh, remembering, ah, oh, I remember this. Or, but, you know, mm. a friend will just keep you, keep you going, keep you going. True. Yeah. Does it does decluttering have uh, an effect on our mental wellness? Absolutely, absolutely. The one thing that I hear back from my clients is like, "Gosh, I feel calmer. I feel less stressed." You know, your home yeah. is meant to be where you come to distress from the mm. office. But if you're coming and there's clutter and there's, you know, you there's a there's that's, there's tension. Yeah. But if you know you're coming to this nice, clean place. Um, you can find what it is you need. Mm. Um, it just, people talk about peace. They talk about calm. Um, or those are the two words I hear all the time yeah. from my clients. It's, uh, yeah. I think it's so effective. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, uh, I have a question. Um, are we able to schedule or, or what role rather does planning and scheduling play in decluttering and repass in the and repurposing processes um yeah how can we plan better and schedule to in order to declutter what role does that play i think it plays a very important role mm -hmm. because once you've planned to do something you've set a goal mm -hmm. you know that motivates you to do it yeah um, you will also plan the time around you do it. So you, you'll be in the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. um, you'll have the tools that you'll, you'll need to do it. Mm -hmm. If you need help, you'll have organized with that person. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very important to plan for, for this. Okay. Um, all right, I think you've already shared uh, how to stay motivated and celebrating progress. Um, have you personally tried any of the repurposing ideas that you mentioned in the article and um, maybe share a success story of a favorite project that you've done? Um, can I say it was actually repurposing a room, so to speak? Mm -hmm. I have this client who, have, who has collected wonderful crockery over the years. And you know, normally in your kitchen, you'll put all your plates and cups in the cupboards and mm -hmm. close the cupboards. And then in your pantry, all your spices are visible. Mm. And so she said, no, I, I keep forgetting to use these beautiful things that I've collected over the years. I want to use them. So we cleared out the pantry and luckily her pantry was open space, nice uh, shelving. Mm -hmm. And we set up the crockery there. And we put the spices and the foods in the closed cupboards. Okay. So for her, mm -hmm. she could come anytime and say, you know, today I'm going to use this blue set that I got from so-and-so. Yeah. Um, ah, tea. We're having tea in nice tea cups and saucers yeah. that had been in her cupboards for ages. So, I mean, that was one project I really, really enjoyed. Yeah. I really enjoyed doing. Nice. Yeah. Okay. You going to say something? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, how, let me see the last one. All right. How can um, how can involving others in the organization process, especially like in shared spaces, um, you know, improve the overall effectiveness of the decluttering and repurposing efforts? You know, everyone has to be on the same page with you. Um, unless you live alone, yeah. let's assume this is a family, mm -hmm. um, you know, you will declutter and you will organize for your children. But if you make it difficult for them to put things away, like you're hanging their things way up there, or the things that they're using every day are stored at the back, mm -hmm. they will go back to that same, mm -hmm. to the same thing of just plonking things where they did. But working with them and saying, okay, 
do you prefer that I hang your clothes? Do you prefer that I fold them? What do you prefer? You know, ask the child or even your, your partner. Do you mm. prefer hanging? Do you prefer folding? Then sometimes it's so much easier to just have a box um, that you fit in the drawer and you don't have to fold every neat and little thing. You just say, here, this is your box for swimming costumes. This is your, your area for socks, mm. you know. So it makes it easy for the child to pick and return, pick and return. So you really have to, to, to work with, with those in the home. Otherwise, all your efforts will go down the drain and you'll be very, very frustrated that mm. you've gone through things, you've bought all these organizing items, but they're not being used. Mm. So it really has to be, you have to get buy-in from, from everyone. Okay. The one interesting um, response that I'm getting or, or inquiries that I'm getting are from older children mm -hmm. wanting to help their parents downsize. Mm -hmm. And um, with that comes a lot of decluttering because we've all used whatever stuff we don't need. Where do we take it? Shags to our parents, you know. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, shags is also here in Nairobi. Yeah. And um, the first thing I tell them when they call me is like, okay, um, do your parents want to do this? Are they in on this? One or two have been, yes, they are. And so I work with their mom. Mm -hmm. One or two have been like, actually, no. I said, no, you need to get their buy-in first. Otherwise, they're not going to allow this stranger to come mm -hmm. in and reorganize their lives. And, you know, and these are special things for them. What you may not think is special could be for them because you don't know the story behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so it is very important to get absolute buy-in from, from whoever you're mm -hmm. living with. Okay, there's something you mentioned about like uh, doing stuff, uh, going back to the same habit. Um, by the time, I, I don't know how it works. Do you contact uh, your clients or do they contact you? And when, for example, you come and declutter, it, is it, might I go back to the same habit um, of just holding on stuff? And what could help me not to go back to that? Um, people have always reached out to me and I think what has happened with them is that they've tried to do it themselves mm. or it's just gotten to be too much and they're like, you know what, I just, something has to change mm. here or it's a change of season in their lives. So normally by the time they're coming to me, they're in the right frame of mind that mm -hmm. something has to change so as as we declutter and reorganize we do talk about the things that need to change and you know the things that need to change in terms of okay when you undress put back don't just dump put it back mm -hmm. when you come in and you take off your shoes this is the area where the shoes will go you know those those little things and you, we talk about them and agree this is what you teach your children if it's a young family that this is and you see when there's an area when there's space to do it mm. it is more likely to be done it's mm. when there isn't that you're like hey i'll just put it there this mm. is the next best place you know so and by the way it does happen that they go back because habits take a long time to change mm. And I'll meet them afterwards and they'll be like, oh, okay, I'm trying, I'm trying. And I'm like, you know, as long as you're trying, that's what, yeah. that's, that's what I, I like to hear. There are times where I have gone back and said, okay, what didn't work? Mm. And maybe we change it and say, instead of doing it this way, let's do it another way. Mm. Just um, So it, does, it doesn't happen automatically because those are habits, things you've done mm. over many years yeah. take just as long to, to change. Okay. Yeah. Wow, all right. Um, mm, I think for me that's it. Unless you have like any advice for... Okay, hold on. You, you talked about space and not having space. What if I don't have space? And I want to like, do I just really just learn to let go? Or do I hold on until I'm able to get space? Um, you learn to let go mm. of what you really, really, really don't need. Okay. And then two, you get creative. 
Okay. You get creative. And this is where I go scouring all these shops for various baskets, containers mm. and so you just get really, really creative about about how you how you use the space. Yeah. I mean one thing I'll say um, is that where the creativity will come in, because you'll find, you know, the way some cupboards are done, there's too much depth. Mm, you know, mm. so then in those instances, you look for little baskets that hang under or you think or you get a big basket. So you pull out a whole basket of clothes rather than rummaging in that big hole mm. of, of space. So it's it's things, things like that. Unfortunately, um, one thing that I found uh, is that our dear, do I call them contractors or yeah. they always forget to give us enough shoe space. Us women, we never get enough shoe space yeah. and enough space to hang long clothes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, so there is where a lot of creativity comes, comes in, in as as to how to to use that space, mm. but still make the stuff visible and yeah. accessible. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Interesting. I was going to ask a question. And it's ever permitted <laughs> <laughs> on what you were saying just now. Okay. Oh well, maybe just give yeah. us a. Um, advice uh, to someone who's looking to declutter perhaps or someone who's really having a hard time letting go of stuff and yet they don't even really have that much space um, what I'd say is number one call simply organized <laughs> yeah. um, but just you know the mind being in the right, right frame of mind makes makes a big difference um, ask for help and not necessarily from me um, from your friends um, read up on it um, there's a lot of stuff on, on the internet that just give you ideas of of what to do and how to go about it um, the other thing I'll say is don't beat yourself up um, it's a process it's a process um, and just take it step by step. Just set a goal. And the first thing is to just get started. Just mm -hmm. get started. And then, and, and once you do, that gives you the oomph to keep, to keep going until you have the space that you, mm -hmm. that you actually want. And then there is, the last thing I'd say, there's no right or wrong way mm -hmm. to organizing. There's some people who like to see their things spread out. They, they, they like to visually see them. There's some people who like things neat and closed behind cupboard doors. Mm. So there's no wrong or right way. It's what works for you that's important, mm. that will make you happy, that makes it easy for you to see your things, take out your things, get ready in the morning, get your kids ready for school. Those little things, it's very individual. It's totally up to you. No right or wrong. Okay. Yeah. I love it.